Welcome back to At Home with the Dogginses. Hey, everybody. And we thought we'd take a break from watching stuff from long before we met <laughs> to talk about how we met. Indeed so. Indeed so. Why don't you take lead on this one, honey? All right. So before Dave and I met, I was getting my master's degree in kind of a confusing subject, which was a part folklore, part cultural sustainability, part nonprofit management. Hence your screen name, Bad Folklore. Yes. Yeah. It was, um, I was really interested in working for the Smithsonian Folklife Festival. So I uh, sort of chose a degree that kind of allowed me to understand more about the programming they were doing while also figuring out how to best raise money for the festival. Uh case of some of you don't know, I'm from the D.C. area and spent a lot of time at the Smithsonian as a kid, and the festival is a big highlight um, of D.C. every summer. And so I took this uh, degree program, which led me to occasionally go to academic conferences, one of them being in Long Beach, California in about 2015. So during this time, I was dating somebody that was friendly with Tony and a few other people, and he was going to go with me. And unfortunately, we broke up, you know, just incompatibility, all that other good stuff. But I still was talking with Tony, and Tony has said, yeah, sure, let's still hang out and stuff. I'll introduce you to my friends. I was like, cool, that sounds like fun. I would like to not be with the same group of nerds the entire time, so let's go hang out with these new nerds when I get there. You want to have a different group of nerds every couple of hours when you're out for a conference like this. Exactly, exactly. So... You know, we kind of get this uh, plan set up. Well, I get to California. I enjoy the beaches of Long Beach. They're beautiful. I And they're also long. And they are indeed long. Um, we were actually right by the hotel by the Queen Mary. So it was a really beautiful, you know, place to look at. Uh, but this entire time I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go meet these people I never met before. I hope I don't die. <laughs> but um, I was kind of excited to get to hang out with people and not have to talk about the sustainability of sustainability, which was a conference topic for four hours. So day comes, I take the train from Long Beach into LA proper, which by the way, kids, uh, the subway in LA, while uh, small, is very confusing to navigate around, especially if you were doing it for the first time as I was. Somehow I managed to make it in L.A. proper, and uh, then I was told to go to a certain street, sat and waited, and then a car pulled up, and I see Tony, and out comes this very cute gentleman driving the car, and he walks over and he says, hello, my name is Dave. So the story is, uh, at this time, Tony's car was in the shop for... Reasons that I do not currently recall because Tony's car has been in the shop a couple times. So I was driving Tony around uh, at this period. This was the day uh, that we had shot some of the stuff for the Escape from Tomorrow review uh, for the Some Jerk episode. Uh, if I recall correctly, this was the day we shot the stuff in the park where Tony swears off cameras and I, as the cameraman, start attacking him as the camera. <laughs> I believe this was the same day as that. So so basically, after spending a few hours filming, we were like, okay, now we have to go pick up this person. We, we have to go pick up Alessandra. And so I'm driving Tony, and we see this person, and she gets in the car, and uh, we start talking, and it does not take me very long to realize this is the coolest person I have ever met in my life. <laughs> You had like the sweetest smile when I met you the first time and I just kind of was like, oh boy, he's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> I've never had a reputation as a troublemaker, but I'll take it. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, we so we go to um, first this really cool little uh, place with Tony that I'd been hearing about called uh, the LA Panorama. It is uh, this big, beautiful, weird little art, like art gallery type of place in, um, I think on Adams Street. And it's like a place lost out of time is the best way to describe it. Like it looks like an old silent movie theater that has just been overgrown with weeds. And uh, so we go in there, we get our tickets, we go walk around, we go look at the panorama, which is this beautiful scene of like ice flows in Antarctica. It's like a uh, classier version of the Norway mural that used to be at the queue for Maelstrom. <laughs> I'll take your word on that. <laughs> but also with the same, it's also the same kind of backdrop you see at like a nature museum in the stuffed polar bear exhibit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
It's really nice and chill up there. They have sort of like these little nice sort of sea sounds, sort of like lightly dinging. And then we walked out to the garden. This place is sort of famous not only for these like beautiful painted murals, but um, they have, I think, the largest uh, collection of Venus flytraps in the country. So they have this sort of big, beautiful secret garden that you can sort of wander around in. And so Tony, me, and Dave were kind of wandering through and talking. And Tony kept on saying, I wish I knew this place existed because it would have been so good for the review. (laughs) So we go look at the gardens together. We like wander around. We sit and sort of talk a little bit more. And I'm just kind of getting more of a feel on these two because like, you know, new people. And I kept on like trying to see how I can get closer to Dave. Because just for some reason, something was drawing me to this like cute little dude. And I was like sort of, you know, moving over, trying to get more out of him. Tony was more than happy to talk for like the both of them. But like I was just trying to open up Dave a little bit more. Because Tony is far less shy than I am around new people. Mm -hmm. Or at the very least, he overcomes his shyness better than I do. Yeah. Yeah, but we had this great time just kind of hanging out, chilling and looking at like all the Venus flytraps and the flowers. And so we... So after a while, we head over to Canners, which I was told was one of the best places to grab lunch in LA slash dinner. And that's where I got to meet Haley and Morgan. And was there anybody else there? Uh, Zach was there that night, too. Haley, Morgan, and Zach. I got to meet them all for like the first time as well. And it was like a fun getting to sort of see the gang, meet them, just enjoy. We were just sort of talking, hanging out. And and I think like had you and Haley already like interacted on Twitter and stuff before that? Probably. I think like with everybody, I kind of interacted a little bit on Twitter, but. Um, L- like none of us didn't know who you were. We just didn't know me. you personally. No, exactly. Because like um, I was meeting you all for the first time and it made perfect sense that we we're all kind of like sort of sniffing around each other, making sure that, you know, is this person safe? But <laughs> um, I think I was sat between you and Tony, if I remember correctly. Probably. And I, when I get nervous, I start telling stories of my life and I just proceeded to have everyone just go, what? At, what? <laughs> what? Okay, okay, what? <laughs> okay, you make it sound like we were more confused than amazed. <laughs> yeah. You make it sound like we weren't, because you have such great stories. Uh, some of the stories you told that night, you've told on the podcast before. Yeah. Some of them you will tell on the podcast in the future. <laughs> yeah. And some of them will never be on the podcast. But yeah, so I, you know, as many have like heard from just some of my stories, I've had kind of like a fun, quirky existence Part of it from living in D.C. and having my parents work in the government and the government leads to some strange bad fellows, as some of you have been able to see with all this mess. But uh, I also went to NYU, where a lot of famous child stars go to detox, and uh, it's led to some fun experiences in time. And as I was sort of telling these like tales that were pretty just like me and my friends doing stuff, you guys were just like, how is this possible? (laughs) <laughs> and, and further confirming for me, like, okay, this is the coolest person I've ever met. Yeah. And um, and I'm, this entire time I was talking, I was like trying to see if I could just gently slide closer into Dave to get a little more of that energy going. So we talk, we eat, we talk, we eat, we kind of do the whole thing. We uh, kibitz a bit. And then we go to Amoeba, which is what Tony suggested that we do. It's kind of like an after meal activity, if I remember correctly. Yes, yeah, so we went down to Amoeba Records, which as of this recording, they just announced that they're uh, losing that location. I'm so bummed. That we, place was so beautiful. It, it was a wonderful place. We've been back a couple of times since. Yeah. And, it's, it, and I had been a couple of times before, but mm-hmm. it, it's such an LA landmark and it's it's really going to be a shame to to see it go yeah I mean Amoeba Records as of this recording it still will exist in some form yeah but that space was just so perfect for it absolutely yeah I'm I'm gonna miss it it was right it was right next to the Cinerama Dome which Mm -hmm. made for a nice one-two punch a lot of evenings of going to browse and then going to a movie yeah and uh, we pretty much closed down Amoeba. Yeah, we, yeah, we absolutely did. We were kind of just stayed there for a couple hours, and, like looking at stuff, collecting music, uh, books. I think I convinced you to buy the Phil Hartman biography, if I remember correctly. Well, what like, I did, like, because the Phil Hartman biography had just come out pretty recently at that time, and I saw they had a copy, and I was looking at it, and I went to you and said, should I buy this? And you were like, I think you have to buy it. Yes. And I bought it. I still haven't read it because I have such a backlog of books to get through. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> and when I have time and energy to read, I usually just reread the same things over and over. <laughs> but 
yeah, I still have not read the Phil Hartman biography, but it's in my stack of biographies I need to read. I'm only just now reading, and I'll probably talk about this in the future, but uh, at a much later time, after we had already started dating, we were at another used bookstore, and I found a Paul Fries biography, which I've been reading lately. Yeah, you've been really enjoying that one. And uh, I'm sure I will talk about that on the podcast when I'm done reading it, <laughs> which I probably am done by the time you're hearing this, but, you know, time is wonky in podcasting and in quarantine. Yeah, yeah. Subseries, Mila Doggins' book club. That could be a, a good... Uh, a good sub-series. We could each take time talking about books we've read recently. I'm down. Listeners, let us know if you would like to hear us talk about books. And listeners, let us know if you would like to follow along with us and we can all read a book together. That could also be fun. Mm -hmm. um, so all that to say, I think on some level I was kind of subconsciously doing like a <laughs> doing like a personality test to, to see if mm -hmm. you to see if the vibe I got from you as a similar type of comedy nerd as me mm. was accurate. I've had that happen before with the, uh, in the past, I, when I have gone out with folks that I have later dated, always like for the first first or second time we hang out is always at like a used music or bookstore and this always is the case where it's like a Monty Python thing or a Phil Hartman <laughs> or like an MSTK3 and they're like, hmm, I wonder if I should get this and I have to convince them into it and they're like, oh yes, you are the right kind of nerd. It's like, you knew you wanted it. You just needed to make sure that I could pass the sniff test. <laughs> I wasn't doing that deliberately. I, I know think I you was just weren't. doing it subconsciously. This is the thing. I know you weren't doing that deliberately because you are not that kind of nerd. But like, I think I think it was more of a test for myself of like how esoteric can I get? Like, where's the border of what I can talk about with you? Which then we later had a long conversation about 1930s radio advertisements that we really were into. We talked a lot about Edgar Bergen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, famous radio ventriloquist Edgar Bergen. <laughs> At some point, Ernie Kovacs came up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, who I can talk about literally for hours on end. And much later, after we started dating, one of the first gifts you got me was an Ernie Kovacs DVD set that yeah. Shout Factory put out. That was very sweet. But uh, yeah, we, we ended up closing down Amoeba. Uh, almost all of us got something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then after that, we were looking for somewhere else to go. So we went down the road to Gower Gulch, the mm -hmm. uh, little vaguely Western themed shopping center. The 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 theming is better than most normal <laughs> shopping centers, but it's, it's like the wildest strip mall in the wilderness. <laughs> it's like one notch below Bravo Farms in terms oh, of Western theming. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this could totally rock like the Knott's Berry Farm marketplace like pretty easily. But it's just like a Rite Aid and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we at the time I was still working at Starbucks. So at the Starbucks on the corner there, we, you know, I used my discount to get everybody drinks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sat out on the patio of the Starbucks for a while, just talking for like another hour or so. Then they were closing up mm -hmm. and we tried to think of where to go from there. And there was also a Denny's at Gower Gulch, which we knew would be open 24 seven. But we were also like, we, we just did canners. Do we really want to go to another food place? Yeah. And I think like Haley and Zach both like knew that getting back to see me would take like a while. So I think they didn't, they weren't ready to go, but they also knew that they couldn't stay out much longer at that point. Yeah. And Morgan had to get back to Riverside and uh, I probably had stuff in the morning, but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we sort of just took it as a sign that it was time for the evening to end. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Except it wasn't really. No, it wasn't. Um, after we kind of all said goodbyes, um, Dave had looked and asked me, uh, hey, do you have a way to get back to Long Beach? I said, yeah, I can probably take the train back. And he's like, well, why don't, after I drop Tony off, why don't I drop you off at the train? But if it's not running, I will drive you back to Long Beach myself. And when I heard this, an idea popped in my head. You were diabolical. I really was. Um so, yeah, we dropped Tony off at his apartment, and then we went back to the train station. I dropped you off, and I just decided to loop around the block uh, to wait to see if I got confirmation from you one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I got a text from you, missed the train. It wasn't until years later that I heard your side of the story. <laughs> yeah, um, the train was was about 10 minutes away, and I was like, you know what? I like talking to this guy. I would like to talk with him for another while 
So, and also, I, I don't want to have to walk from the train to the apartment that I was, like, staying at with, like, five other people. Which is actually <laughs> legitimate and not diabolical. Yeah. But. <laughs> but I also was like, I just, this I'm getting a vibe off of this guy, and I really kind of would like to continue talking with him because he seems really nice, and he gives good feelings, and he's got the right type of comedy nerdiness for me. So why not just say that I missed the train and he claims that he lives very close to Long Beach, so let me get a ride back from him. Very close is, I mean, closer than anyone else in the group. I mean, it. accurate, yeah. <laughs> the problem with Long Beach is it's so huge that, like, La Mirada is close to Long Beach, but not necessarily close to the same part of Long Beach. Yeah. But it honestly wasn't that far out of the way. Yeah. So um, Dave drove me back and I mean, the the biggest problem for me was this was at the time where my in-car GPS was broken and I didn't have a smartphone yet. So we had to go off of your phone yeah. for navigation. And then I had to go find somewhere like pull over somewhere like a closed Starbucks to use their Wi-Fi mm -hmm. to pull up maps on my ipod touch uh -huh. to figure out how to get home from where i was <laughs> and then once i saw it's like oh the the 91's right over here and then i know how to get home for like yeah. it, it wasn't that difficult but it was just like we all take our smartphones for granted but when i didn't have one it was a lot of macgyvering other technology yeah. to figure oh, out how to get places i can imagine but yeah so dave when he was uh driving me back i was like trying to engage him in some conversation and i could tell that he was kind of like What's happening here? Well, I was shy and I was <laughs> tired and I was. You were tired, shy, and interested. Tired, tired. You were tired, shy, and interested. What? Could... <laughs> I mean, I was interested. I, I did want to keep talking. <laughs> I really liked talking to you. Like, I was secretly happy that you missed the train. <laughs> I was secretly happy that I got more time with you. Yeah. Like, I could have listened to you talk for hours. Me talking is the harder part. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I got. Um... You so you did answer some questions about VidCon because I was kind of curious about that because that was a topic that naturally came up during the course of uh, conversation, mm -hmm. and uh, that seemed to get you perked up to talking a little bit more about like oh I learned about this about VidCon and I learned about marketing at VidCon and all this other stuff and uh, we just kind of spent the whole time sort of like talking and we I think that's how we got onto to the Ernie Krovex tip was uh, talking about him via YouTube and other stuff. And then uh, you got me to Long Beach and you dropped me off. And the one thing I was trying to figure out during the ride is, would it be too much if I tried to kiss this guy like right now? Because like I got that much of a vibe off you. I'm like, I would like to kiss him, but I don't want to freak him out. I probably would have been more confused than anything, but also excited. <laughs> I, uh, listeners, I did not kiss him, but um, later on we made up for that big time <laughs> it's true um my my whole thought at the time you know again being the insecure nerd that i am i never assume anyone's into me <laughs> oh baby <laughs> but i was in the headspace of i want to be best friends with this person oh baby and after i dropped you off as i was pulling over somewhere to figure out how to get back to la mirada mm -hmm. the thought i kept having was i I hope this isn't one of those things where we never see each other again and we don't keep in touch because I've met a lot of people in life who it's like, oh, this person seems cool. And then you just don't keep up with those people. Yeah, of course. And like, there's no shame in that. It's just it's how life goes. But I was really hoping you wouldn't be one of those. And I was thinking the whole way home, like, what what steps do I take to keep in touch with this person? What do I do? I get home to find that you had immediately added me on all of the social media. Indeed I did. And I was like, well, step one taken care of. <laughs> and then over the next couple of years, we just stayed in touch. Uh, I still thought you were the coolest person ever. I still was too oblivious to the obvious signals you were giving me <laughs> that you were into me. Mm. But we would have nights where we would watch things together over Skype or... We watched a lot of CISO shows back when CISO existed. Yeah, it was actually, I knowing that you had a CISO account, I kind of put a very uh, leading Facebook message up asking if anybody had an account I could borrow, and you were the first person to get in touch with me about that. You, you were like, does anyone have a CISO account so I can watch the Mabim Bam show? And I think within minutes, I was like, I do, I do, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, 
Yes. <laughs> like your trap worked perfectly. <laughs> and it was a couple years later after one of these nights, uh, you were planning another visit to California. Yeah. And uh, after one of these nights where we were watching Take My Wife or something or. Something, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you turned on your camera, which, you know, we were usually just doing screen share. Mm -hmm. So I turned on my camera. You said I looked cute. I blushed the reddest I've ever blushed in my life. <laughs> I was worried you may have eaten a peanut and had an allergic reaction because you were so <laughs> red. <laughs> like He's not allergic to peanuts, but just like. <laughs> well, as far as I know, we yeah. still don't know what I'm allergic. I'm allergic to something. We still don't know for sure what it is. Mm -hmm. And then you said, uh, when I'm in town, would you like to go on a date with me? And I've never said yes faster to anything. Yes, this is true. I do not remember the rest of the conversation. It was a blurry haze of joy. I think it was like, cool, awesome. I'll see you in a few weeks. <laughs> I think I think I was like, yes, I, I yes, I, I like you a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember how that conversation ended. I just remember being delirious. Oh, baby. And uh, one thing led to another. And here we are now. Yeah. And I couldn't be happier. I like joke around. It's like we we sort of had to inverse ask and say yes to each other as fast as possible because I asked and I don't think you could have said yes any quicker. When you asked me to marry you, I don't think I could have said yes any faster. When I eventually asked you to marry me, you said yes before I finished asking. Yeah. <laughs> so it's now just going to be a matter of who says I do fastest yeah, at the wedding. I exactly. Guess. We are still operating under the assumption that we'll be having a wedding. It just mm -hmm. may be a different shape than we were planning. Yeah, on. it's like we're definitely getting married this year. Whether or not it's actually going to be when we hope it to be or at another time is a whole different story. Yeah, or just a more private ceremony than we were planning on. Yeah. We'll see. But uh, this isn't a wedding planning podcast, so we won't bore you with all those details. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically our story. Yeah. Or at least how it started. Yeah. It's still being written. Yeah. Anyway, we should probably bring this to a close before we get too sappy for our <laughs> audience. So, until next time, this has been At Home with the Dogginses. Later days, y'all. Later days. Later days.